And and Norman, as someone who's you know been working on the ground, you're part of a steel worker local in Southern California, which I believe works at an oil refinery. There's I'm familiar with a number of environmental justice fights and environmental justice groups down in Southern California. I'm wondering as someone on the ground picking up on this, narrowing down on the question I just asked Jeff, as, as someone on the ground, what are some of the challenges in which, which you've seen particularly being in spaces with environmental justice, climate justice groups, or just straight up environmental groups too, right? There's also a, a whole divide between what I would call white-led environmental movements versus environmental justice groups and communities on the ground. So one of the things, and one of the main things is that folks don't know fully what we're doing at the refinery. There's a lot of, I'll call it slop in the language because we're talking about fossil fuels generally because we want to get rid of the internal combustion engine, but that's not everything that comes out of a barrel of oil. That's one piece. Um, another piece, the picture behind me, I used that. That's Huntington Beach, California, 100 years ago. And I use it as an example. If you picture each one of those derricks as a household, we're asking for them to give up their source of income. And then that collection of derricks is a community, it's a county, it's a municipality, because we, as one would expect, we have clusters of folks that live around the refineries. And so there's a high degree. We've had 100 years of collective bargaining. So we've we have good contracts. We've had good contracts. These jobs have been held by, I've worked with folks where it's the third generation that's held these jobs. And so I give that, explain some of that and some of what's going to happen next is the loss of uh, revenues for cities and, and municipalities. And then it starts being an issue with being able to fund for fire departments, police departments, libraries, having a pizza party after a soccer match, that these are the impacts. And so that understanding has gone a long way for folks and how they approach it. And then also there's the piece that, that we're all painted. Everybody in the refinery is painted with the same paintbrush. There's folks that work inside the refineries that understand the situation and, and the challenges that we're facing climate wise. But on the other hand, is if we look at what happened with solar panel installation and what a terrible outcome there's been there as far as they're just dirt poor paying jobs, the alternatives to what folks are currently doing isn't there. And so then you're going to hold on to the paycheck you've had for the last 200 years. They've never bounced a check and the, versus while we hear is green jobs and we don't know what that is. So mm -hmm. the word transition is used, but that would seem to suggest there's somewhere to go. When we look to see where there is to go, there isn't anything. And so then people just hold on to what they know. And ultimately this is all a jobs issue. Folks say green jobs will retrain people. Okay, I lose my job on Friday. On Monday, I go to retraining. I finish up my training on that Friday. What then? So that's where it becomes a jobs thing and we're not seeing it. So there's hesitance on people's, there, nobody is born on the planet wanting to work in a refinery. There's high temperatures, high toxic chemicals, high pressures. If there's something else to do, we'll, we'll do it, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be there. And then there's a grander scale. If you picture an elevator and it's, there's 50 people in the elevator and California's in the middle, and we're there taking off a sweater. So we're throwing elbows everywhere. And the policies that have been enacted, that's us throwing elbows to the person in Ohio or in or Indiana that makes carburetors or that makes um, catalytic converters or mufflers because we don't need any of those things for electric cars. So they see the same issue as do, a, and then it becomes a ballot box issue do I vote to keep the job I have or do I vote for the environment? And that's where it becomes that either or thing. Um, mm -hmm. And, but it doesn't have to be that way, but it hasn't been shown what's next. Mm -hmm. And so those are the discussions I've had with our folks and then mm -hmm. also with the environmental folks. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so that's helped make for a better atmosphere for discussions to take place because it's just the right thing to do historically has been to keep a roof over your head and food on the tables. Mm -hmm. And now the right thing, there's an alternate version of the right thing, which is to give up your job for the climate. Mm -hmm. And 